Okay, I took our French seam and I pressed it flat. We're going to take this one before we finish the um, flat felled seam and we're going to take it and we're going to attach it to a card. So we have now our reference card. We can see what we were doing. So here's the flat felled seam. So we have again our pretty side of our fabric is facing up because we stitched it wrong sides together. We took our seam allowance and we took half of it and we cut it down low. Then we pressed the other half of it so it wraps around that cut edge of the other one. Pressed it flat and then pressed it all to one side so we have this. Now we're going to sew close to this folded pressed edge right here. We're going to sew along that edge. Pretty close to it, but not, you know, you want to make sure you sew on it, but, but really close to it, but not, you know, not off of it. I'll move all my stuff out of my way. I really do need my reading glasses for this. Oh, I can't really see where the fold is. I can't see what I'm stitching. Well, that's better. So find a mark on your presser foot and just keep that folded edge of your fabric lined up with that mark, wherever that mark is on your um, foot or the spot on your foot. I'm going to, my, my thread is what wrapped up and wound up around my uh, presser foot here. So the needle's in the down position and I've just lifted up the foot so I can, there we go, so I can unwrap the thread. It got, that's one of the reasons you want to hold your threads. Okay, now we keep it going. So just go slow. Don't feel like you have to go fast. Again, this is called a flat felled seam. There's probably as many ways to do seams as there is paint colors in your paint box but this is this is a really nice again a nice way to do a seam where it's completely finished and you could use this as the right side or you could do it the opposite way and use this as the right side especially with fabric like this um, where it's very difficult if not impossible to tell it doesn't matter it's just a matter of which side you think is prettier uh, for the project that you're working on so we're going to take this again and we're going to staple it. So again, make notes on the back. All right, so I want to have a I have at least two more I want to do for you today. I'm gonna <clears throat> take a couple more pieces of fabric. Let's see. I'm gonna take this one. Again, we're gonna cut it in half. And we're gonna do the basics of putting in a zipper. Now I've shown you before in our video where we made our little pencil bag, a, a one way of doing a zipper. It's not really the proper way. All the raw edges are showing, but it's you definitely could do a zipper that way. I'm going to actually show you um, kind of the proper way to do a zipper. So um, I'm going to um, make it work with this machine. This does not have a zipper foot, but we're going to make it work. At least I think we're going to make it work. <laughs> we'll find out here in a minute. So I'm going to take my zipper and I'm going to line it up with my fabric and kind of eyeball it and stick it in the middle. Generally speaking, your sewing machine may have a zipper foot in it, which is going to make it a little easier to do zippers. Um, this one doesn't. So when you have these inexpensive machines and you want to stick a zipper in, it may be challenging. I am going to stick a, pin, a couple pins in here. Okay, so I'm going to get, I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the zipper teeth without sewing through the zipper teeth. Um, I'm going to try to line up this edge of the, of the zipper with the outside edge of the zipper foot here on this sewing machine and let's just see what happens. Don't sew over your pins. Okay, when you get almost to the end, of course, take your pin out, you're going to want to have the needle down, lift up your zipper foot, and you're going to want to pull the zipper pull down, and it's going to be fiddly, but you want to pull it past 
I'm going to use some tweezers here. You want to pull it past the, the um, needle. So you want to pull it past the needle and then reline up your zipper, edge of your zipper with the edge of the fabric. Put your presser foot back down again. There's a lot of different ways to put in the zippers and there's different kinds of zippers. So this is just one way. All right. So now we have it like that. Um, if you were making um, dressmaking, first of all, you wouldn't use a white zipper on this fabric. <laughs> um, that just wouldn't happen. And you would, there's a different way of doing it that would enclose the zipper more behind the fabric. Um, and me, we may see if we can top stitch this to like cover it up a little bit. Let's see where we get with it. Um, first, let's do the other side of the fabric. So we want to um, start up here. I want to use the edge of the zipper tape um, as a guide for the presser foot. So I'm going to have to start with the zipper pull open. And I'm going to line up my fabric pieces so the two pieces are in the same about place on the zipper. There we go. stop again with the needle down. I'm going to take my tweezers and let them help me pull my zipper pull up. You want to have it be as flat as possible so it'll slide under the zipper foot um, fairly easily without getting jammed. There we go. All right, let's press it and see where we're at. I'll be right back. Okay, we're not going to leave this this way. I pressed it this way so that you guys could see something. So if you were going to do this on a garment, for instance, and you wanted the zipper to be mostly hidden, then you would sew a seam here, and you would use a really long stitch length. Then you would press your seam open flat like we did in the first case, like this. You would lay your zipper along the seam where the two fabric pieces join, the zipper teeth, pin it together, and sew it down, sew the zipper down, sew around the zipper, and you, you would end up with something like this. Then after you got, and you would make sure you tack it across the bottom, and when you got the zipper in there, and you got it all sewn, then you would come in with your seam ripper, and you would pull these stitches out where the zipper is. So then it would look like this, right? So I, or you also could do, like if you're doing a pencil bag though, you want to um, sew it the way we did here because you're gonna be taking these pieces of fabric and sewing down the seams and then turning it out and the zipper is gonna, the zipper is gonna, you know, that's part of the bag, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do a zipper and there is something called an invisible zipper that you really can hardly tell is there um, when you're done. Uh, most of these are garment making techniques. We're mixed media artists and we're gonna probably be only doing these with regards to pencil bags and that sort of thing. Um, you can just leave this the way it is and leave it open. There's nothing wrong with that. I do think I'm going to leave it pressed like this, and I think I think we're going to leave it like this. I was thinking I wasn't going to, but I think we're going to leave it like this. And I'm going to, this is not the right way to do a zipper. I am going to come here, there's a little stop at the end of the zipper, you see the little stop? So you don't want to stitch that, that's metal. So I'm going to stitch it just below that and push my two pressed folded edges together. It's right there. Stitch across them. 
Again, not the right way to do this, but it's interesting. And if you're doing this, it's like, you know, I could, I could very much see this whole thing sewn to a journal cover. Where's my journal I did today? So I could see this whole thing, get the zipper in the fabric, tack the bottom, tack the top, and then sew the whole thing all the way around all the edges to the journal cover and then you have this interesting little pocket here to put things in on your, that would be interesting. So we're going we're gonna to tack this together up at the top too and then we're going to staple it to our card. So again, I'm just pushing the two folded uh, pressed edges of fabric together. Okay. Now, if you're do making a garment, you're making a dress or something like that, don't do it this way. <laughs> Um, you probably, I mean, this would be okay. And definitely don't use a white zipper on dark fabric like this. You know, on this, I would use a dark green zipper or a dark brown zipper would be much better and less obvious. So we're going to do this and we're going to staple it up here to the top. Okay. Now, we need to take two pieces of our four by six inch approximately fabric and we are going to press them in half, right sides out, like this, and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're gonna do a simple mixed media artist's version of a buttonhole. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of different kinds of buttonholes, including a bound buttonhole, which is really fiddly, and I don't enjoy making. Um, there's your traditional buttonhole that has zigzagging along all the edges and then a long zigzag and then zigzag up with the other and you know, you've seen it. This machine really isn't conducive to doing those, uh, the, the traditional sewn buttonhole. You could do a bound buttonhole on here, but like I said, I don't like doing them. So we're not going to. <laughs> um, I do have a button here and I've got my two folded pieces of fabric and I want, I'm going to want them to overlap a little bit. So I've got them overlapping about mm, a half inch, three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to lay my button here on the center of the fabric. And I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to put a little mark on one side and the other of the buttonhole. I mean the button. So I know about how long I want the buttonhole to be. I'm going to switch my dial to a small straight stitch. So I've got A, which is a straight stitch, but it's teeny tiny. We're going to put this reading glasses on so I can see what the heck I'm doing. And we are going to start with the needle in the down position at one of those black marks. Now, this little machine has no light, so finding the exact mark can be a challenge. And you may not want to just not want to do buttonholes, but that's okay, skip it. All right, now that I've got the needle down, I'm going to guide the fabric down and so hopefully straight down to the other mark and stop with the needle down in that other mark. One more. Okay, then we're gonna stop with the needle down, lift up the presser foot and turn, do one, two, three stitches about across, then stop with it down again and turn, do a parallel line to the first line of stitching, stop, hopefully where you started, I might have gone one stitch too far, I'll go over, okay, cut your threads, Make sure you go backwards and forwards at the beginning and the end. I'm not sure I did in the beginning, but make sure you do. All right, 
So now you have something like that. Where are we? There we are. All right. So we're going to take. Um, Normally I use a smaller pair of scissors for this, but we're going to use these. We're going to fold our fabric in half and make a little snip in between in the middle of those stitching lines. And then we're going to um, cut almost to the edge on one side and almost to the edge on the other side. And then do a diagonal to the corners. Um, nail, cutting, uh, nail trimming scissors are great for this as are medical scissors. I'm just lazy and don't want to go get them out. Okay, so now you have this. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of this fray check. And especially if I was doing this on a journal cover, I would definitely do this. And again, this is that um, glue that prevents raveling. And I'm going to run it all the way around the buttonhole, like near on or near the stitching that I just created. I have to, it's clogged up, wait. And again, it dries clear. It's going to look wet when it first goes on, but it dries clear. And that'll prevent it from unraveling, and if you forget to go backwards and forwards like I think I did, it'll prevent it from coming out. All right, And that's washable. Okay, so while that's drying a minute, we're going to take our button, and we're going to sew our button on. I'm going <clears> to <throat> take a little bit of our turquoise thread here and thread my sewing needle. I think I've got my glasses on. Okay. So we're going to just kind of line up where it would be right about there, the button. Okay, so I'm going to come up from the back side through one of the holes and then down through the other hole. I'm not going to pull it completely tight. Leave it a little bit, a little bit loose. There's a reason for that. Oops. Let's see. There we go. Pull it firm, but don't pull it too tight. Do this um, three or four times. I've got my thread doubled, so. All right. Now the next time you come up from the bottom, come up between the fabric and the button, and wrap your thread around those th stitches a few times, and then go out towards the bottom. Tire thread off. That wasn't the neatest job I've ever done, but you get the idea. Yeah. Okay, so now you have your button side, and you know, this could be again, this could be a journal cover, this could be maybe on the two ends of a belly band that you do on a journal. Um, you know, you could get brave and make a shirt, but I would do the buttonhole a different way. So then the button fits through the buttonhole, and there you go. So now we're going to staple this to a card again. Right? So we have a, a raw edge buttonhole, a top stitched seam, a basic seam, a zipper flat felled seam, French seam, and a welted seam. So you can put um, holes in these cards at the top near your staples somewhere. You can do one or two holes. I'm trying to decide how many holes I want. And do I want it in the center or do I want it in the corner? I think I want two holes. And 
once you do one, you can like mark it for the other ones. Let's see. You know what? Make yourself a punch guide. <laughs> Holy cow! That was totally the hard way, guys. Make yourself a punch guide. Do yourself a favor. There we go. That's easier. So I'm just taking the fabric and folding it down because my whole punch... I don't want to get out the crocodile again and the whole punch is not liking punching through the fabric. Ugh, see? Just make sure you don't hit a staple. If there's a particular kind of a stitch that you want to see, let me know. If you want to see me how to do a certain kind of a seam or something, let me know. But these are just some basics. This is intended to be some basics. Look up different websites like So Delicious and um, see what other things they have. And try making some little samples and adding to your um, sewing sample book, your reference book. And um, that way you have um, your own kind of reference sheet. Um, for when you want to break out the little sewing machine and sew on paper or fabric, doing some mixed media stuff. Um, we will be coming back next with the Janome, and we will be making collaged, fabric collage bookmarks, and I think we'll be working on some tags. We're going to stick with working on the Janome for a while, and this is something that we want to do that has a stitch that requirement that this won't do. Um, but for basic mixed media sewing and sewing on paper, this little machine does just fine. Um, I made something with it the other day now. I don't remember what it was. Oh, uh, the little, uh, net, the light, latest batch of little spirit dolls. They did just fine. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <sighs> See, it doesn't like the fabric. Okay, so we're going to take all of our cards. I'm going to take a couple of my wire um, binding rings. These are from Amazon and they're, I think, intended to be keychains, just FYI. But I don't use them for that. And I'm going to string them all together. And then they have a little screw closure. The thing I like about these is they don't come undone. Once they're on here, you have to unscrew it to get it off. I love that. Seems like the other traditional binding ring, binder rings are always popping open. There we go. So there we go. Here is our little reference book. And this is cute. And, you know, you, there's plenty of room on the back or even the underside to do some journaling or doodling or whatever. And this can be your own little reference book for your own little different kinds of things. Now, if there's, like I said, if there's other things that you want to see, um, whether I use the Janome or the other machine, different ways of putting in zippers, different ways of doing, you know, buttonholes, let me know. Uh, but here's some basics. Two challenges, the zipper and the buttonhole, um, and then some basic seams. So get out the iron, get out your sewing machine, and practice making some little samples, and see how far you get. Don't forget the most important things. Of course, like, share, and subscribe, but go out and do something nice for yourself. Have some fun. You deserve it. You know you do, and I know you do, too. All right, I'll see you all later. Bye, guys.